Jack? How are you, Warner? I'm fine. Say, uh, tell me, are you going to do anything in this review? Oh, yes. A mystery play written especially for me, around my character, Dr. Fu Manchu. Written especially for you? Yes. I bet it's good. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Well, I don't think Clive so Brooks. How are you, Clive? Mr. Roach. Say, I thought you were over in Europe. No, I had to postpone my trip. I had to do an item for the review. So, what are you going to do, sing? No, a mystery play written especially around my character of Sherlock Holmes. Mm. Mystery play. Yeah. But especially for you. Yeah, it's especially for me. But it's interesting. Yeah, come along and see it. I will. I might dash up to the moment. Well, I'm it's Bill Fowl. How are you, Bill? Hello, oh, no, Jackie. Let's see it. Say, I hear you going to do a song and dance for this review. Is that so? <laughs> no, Jackie, I'm going to do a mystery play. They're written especially for me around my character of Final Vance, you know? Especially written for you around your character. So, well, sir, I want to look for it. <laughs> Gene Paulette. How are you, Gene? Hello, Johnny. Hi. Yeah, glad to see you. Good evening. Say, uh, I hear you're doing a couple of impersonations in this crime went on parade. No, John, I'd like to, but I've got to do a mystery play written especially for me around my character of Sergeant Heat. Oh, uh, mystery play? Yeah. Written especially for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds very original. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Say, Jack, just uh, help yourself to this spinach. I won't be needing it. Oh, no thanks, Gene. I have to run away. I have to go and take my big solo lessons. <laughs> I heard you were out for a record. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. He's trying to needle me. <laughs> Studio Ingenue, Jack Oakey. Come 
in. Greetings to you, Honorable Sergeant Pete. Well, Fu Manchu, old boy. I hurried over just as soon as I got your phone call. You know, it's darn nice of you to phone me whenever you kill a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, why did you have to kill him? God to my ancestors. He doubted that I was a murderer, so I killed the disbeliever. Fair enough. And you certainly did a nice job. Mm. Well, everything's cut and dry. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me, Doctor. It's a pleasure. <laughs> now I have the nicest new patrol wagon downstairs, and you and me are going for a nice little ride. Good! <laughs> <laughs> My dear doctor. The Honorable Mr. Philo Vang. Uh, now, Sergeant, uh, if I may ask, how do you know that Dr. Fu committed this murder? Well, it's uh, more or less a hunch. You see, the dead man here was stabbed and shot. And when I came in, Dr. Fu Manchu had a knife and a gun in his hand. Now, he admitted the crime. And, uh, well, somewhere or another, I just kind of thought maybe he did do it. <laughs> well, very good, Sergeant. Very good. But uh, aren't you just a trifle premature? For instance, you haven't even once mentioned the word psychology. Oh, have I got to go through all that again? One moment. I want my right. Am I to be arrested or am I not? You know, he's a pretty important man in his line. But you can't expect me to admit that Dr. Fu committed this murder until I have eliminated all the other suspects. When Fu Manchu is pleased to commit a murder, there are no other suspects. There must be other suspects. <laughs> there are always other suspects. If necessary, I shall make other suspects. Watson, there's a murdered man in this room. Amazing. How did you come to that conclusion, Mr. Holmes? My dear Watson, there are four men in this room, one of whom does not move. He is obviously not asleep. Since if he were asleep, there would be riveters at work next door, which there are not. As he is not asleep, he is obviously murdered. Marvelous. Marvelous. Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. <laughs> My name is Holmes, Sherlock. Van, Philo. If you'll pardon me, I'll take Dr. Fu Man too down to headquarters and have him booked for murder. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's preposterous, us. Why, we haven't even yet discovered whether the pearls are missing or not. What pearls? What pearls? The pearls. <laughs> Why, devils? Am I to be arrested or am I not? Certainly, Certainly not. not. Don't be absurd. <laughs> Will you be good enough to unlock these handcuffs? What? <whistles> Certainly, Doctor. <laughs> Darn clever, you Chinese. I'm sorry I didn't think of it myself. I had to do it. It was the only way I could convince them that I am a murderer. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
It's a mystery play, written especially for me. <laughs> A little recitation by Rudyard Kipling entitled, Gunga Din. <coughs> a bunch of the boys were whooping it up. I should say four or five young lads, maybe six. Pardon me, Mr. Gallagher. Could I interrupt you personally? Well, you not only could, but you have, Mr. Green. Oh, you remember me? <laughs> Certainly. Weren't we in a picture together? Yeah, but I didn't think you'd recognize me. I look so different without makeup. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, you know, I have the recitating rights in this review. I'm supposed to be the only serious touch. You know, like Barrymore's giving out. Uh, to be or not to be. Uh, what is the answer? Uh, uh, that was no lady, that was my wife. Uh, that's it, <laughs> that's it. Uh, let's see now, Mr. Green. Uh, John Barrymore. Yes. Oh, quiet. No, it's still green. Barrymore. On the bias, it's still green. What are you measuring there, Mr. Gallagher? Well, you know, Harry, uh, you better go out and get yourself a pro feel like John Barrymore before we can consider you. We? Certainly. Since when are you a boss? Well, I didn't mean it that <laughs> way, Harry. Since yeah. when did you get to be a we? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mr. Gallagher. Harry Green will kibitz himself into this review if it takes me till 1942, uh, the year that Christopher Columbus discovered America. Now, I must practice. To be or not to be. Not to be. Uh, that was no lady, that was my wife. <laughs> that was no lady, that was my wife. To be your not to be. Nothing annoys me. A little recitation by Rudyard Kipling entitled Gunga Din. It was a kid's last fight. And the goodly crowd was there. I should say four or five young lads, maybe six. Yes, no, <laughs> Don't go away, I'll get to you. Voulez-vous le passer de ma pour dire en anglais ce que je vais dire en français? Vous? Yeah. Uh, he wishes me to uh, interpret to you in English what he's going to tell me in French. Monsieur, si quelqu'un ne va pas cacher, ne va pas cacher, moi j'ai rien. Je ne vais pas cacher, pour le snatch. Mesdames, messieurs, il est tout à fait naturel que l'un des plus importants numéros de cette revue soit interprété par un artiste dont le nom est synonyme de Paris. Paris. Parmi les vedettes françaises, aucune n'a jamais atteint la popularité qui couronne la carrière de ce charmant garçon qui vient, depuis un an, de conquérir aussi l'Amérique. Et, euh... Je vais aller next. Bonsoir, monsieur l'âme. <laughs> That means hello, everybody. In order to bring a little international flavor into the review, Mr. Paramount, has asked me to do something typically French. Something typically French. Of course, <laughs> there are many things I could do that would be typically French, but uh, I don't know, you know. Uh, I'll do it, of course, but it's, uh, if it's a little bit naughty, <laughs> it's going to be French, that's all. I'm sure you all know the Apache dance, eh? ta da 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 and I know that the whole world thinks that the attache dance was created in Paris, in our underworld, amongst, amongst our, uh, our gangsters. Not at all. And with the assistance of charming Miss Evelyn Brand, I'm now going to show you the real origin of the attache dance. Just a minute. Well, I think the show was very good tonight. Don't you, darling? Yes. You don't look very enthusiastic. What's the matter? I'm wondering how you managed to even see the show. What do you mean? You were so busy flirting with that girl on the other side of you. <laughs> I don't be absurd. You deny it? Oh, absolutely. I say you flirted with the girl upon your right. Oh, that's silly. Let's not start a fight. You know you did flirt. No, dear. Yes, dear. Uh, no, dear. I was watching you flirt right along. I tell you, sweetheart, that you're wrong. I say I'm not, dear. Yes, dear? No, dear. Oh, what? What? I say you 
Très bien. Ta mère était bonne Oui. Il n'y a pas trop de, de trucs, non Il est très bien. 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 Il Like that. <laughs> and I'm telling him that the American people are all right. See, they are very fair, not to worry. Try to, to, to cheer him up a little, you know? <laughs> not worry, that's going to be absolutely all right, eh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. This guy ain't dead yet. He's not. What's the time? Five to twelve. Let's go eat. We pick him up after lunch. All right. Well, you're up. How are you feeling? I'm dying. Oh, that blanket again. Oh. Oh. Put that foot down. I want these feet tucked in and well covered up at all times.
Your wife is here. But remember, she can only stay a moment. Well, didn't she bring the kids? Yes, the children are with her. Oh, Elma, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm dying. Oh, but Elma, you should see the lovely floral pieces we've selected for you. Ooh. Now, now, Mrs. Zildwanis, you promised. I'll go. I know he wants a moment alone with the children. Oh, goodbye, Elma. Goodbye. Well, I'll be seeing you. Now, listen, I'm only trying to do the thing that's right. I don't want more than my share, you know it. You don't want more than your share. Why, you're taking everything that there is left. There's nothing left for me at all. That's not but true. I told Junior, you before that I was... get Daddy a glass of water. Of you. Junior! Oh, shut up. Do you think I'm crazy? I'm only trying to do what's right. You're only trying to do what's right, yes, but Francis, you're right things to do every... Francis, get Daddy a glass of water. Oh, well, you scram, get it yourself. Now, I'll tell I you think. what I'll do. After the funeral... I'll give you the furniture, and I'll take the automobile. You give me the boys, what? Boys, boys, well, boys. Daddy doesn't like to hear you quarrel. Oh, shut, shut up. up. I'll let her go back home to her mother. Is that You're going to get married, you can use the furniture. Oh, furniture. boys. What, what do, do you want? want? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> He's dying to announce Jack Oakey and Selma O'Neill. Way, girls. <laughs> now, girls, do you remember the little exercise that we learned last week? Well, you know, <laughs> wait a minute. What's the matter? Well, you know, please, please, girls. Good, 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 good. Ah. What's the matter with you, honey? What am I going to do with my leg? Throw it out the window and don't bother to cut it off. Good morning. Uh, that'll be all for today, girls. Bye. So that's the bunch of old guys you're supposed to have up your teaching things to, huh? What are you supposed to be teaching them, massages? Oh, honey, you don't understand. I'm doing all this for art. That's right. Blame it on somebody else. I suppose art claims he's doing the same for you. Oh, honey, you mustn't get sore at me for talking to those other dames. No, what am I supposed to do? Write you a letter of recommendation? Oh, you don't understand, honey. It's just like a fighter training with a bunch of mugs getting in shape for the champ. You know, somebody told me that love is a game. And I have to watch every fight. And so if I strike it, I'm not to blame. Cause I must improve every day. So if I kiss a cutie, no matter who, I'm insaning for you. And if I hug a cutie, honest and true, well, I'm insaning for you. 
Just we must, you must realize that my arms need the exercise. Then I'll be in condition when I get through a this training for you. I know that you know that I know you. That's why I train this him. Love as a game can be played by two. I also must be in trim. Now, if you see me second, somebody knew that I'm in training for you. Learning every second just what to do. direction when my heart of beauty honest and true i'm in training for when you do a hunting buddy you won't need no understudy we are you must be our life my heart sees the exercise i'll be in condition when i get through walking down toward Madame X. I beg pardon me, lady, but the stage awaits your presence. Mr. Frederick Mark, Mr. Stuart Irwin, and the other Thespians are consumed with impatience. In other words, Charlie, will you uh, get going? Ah, uh, my, uh, my good fellow, uh, will you hasten to my distinguished companions and sisters and inform them that I regret infinitely the unavoidable delay? In other words, Read it, kid. Well, I'll give you five minutes. Less than that. Righto. Wait. Thank you. A sketch laid in France shortly after the war entitled My Marine with Miss Ruth Chatterton. Come on, let's be dusty. Boy up an alley. Very close. Come on. Come on. Like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, huh? Mike again! 
Allez-vous en, maintenant. Vous avez fait à votre métier autre part. Ça va. Ça va. Je t'aime, ma petite chérie. I love you, kid. Родной, очаровательное дитя, не покидай меня, я люблю тебя, люблю тебя безмерно, безгранично. Say it again. Родной, мое дитя, безмерно, безгранично люблю тебя, не покидай меня, не покидай во век. My name. Alain Tatiou. Your name. Germaine Latour. Adresse. 45, rue de Victoire. Phone number. Central, 1142. My name is... Just Westing benches. Officer, officer, will you please come with me and help me? I want to show you something. You see that man? Yes. Well, that's my husband. This is the happiest moment of my life. Je suis navré de vous contrarier, madame, mais qui sous les pauvres garçons, fallait bien laisser un peu les tranquilles, n'est-ce pas Pardon, au revoir, madame. Just one moon, so there is only one 
What you're going to do. No, 
know Miss Helen Kane, the girl who started the epidemic of poo poo produce. Well, she is in the next scene, and we're going to try to show you what we think might happen if Helen Kane had a school of her own. Well, I shall be seeing you. Good morning, children. Thanks for the ovation. It's a funny thing, but applause make a lot of actors nervous. Doesn't bother me at all. Thank you, Dad. Can you folks hear me out there all right? Want me to talk a little louder? Yes, louder and funnier. I, uh, I will now be a magician. That's great. Make yourself disappear. As I was saying before I was interrupted, I don't know what I was saying. I, I came out here for some reason, but... Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. To announce the next act. I have it with me. It's in this box. This is a shoe box. You'd never guess what I'd have in it. 
pair of shoes. I'll place one here. And the other one here. Now, the trick is this. But first showing you I had nothing up the sleeves. Nothing concealed in my coat. Look, silk. Now I'm going to produce Nancy Carroll out of this shoe. And I'm going to show you in the box here, Abe Lyman and his band. Come on, get up a little closer. Are you ready, Nancy? Don't be alarmed, folks. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to sing. I'm not even going to recite. I'm out here this time to introduce our next number. Oh, it's a pretty little thing. It's called Let's Drink to the Girl of My Dreams. And I know that... Oh, hello, Jack. Are we supposed... 
What are we going to do in this number? Well, as far as I gather, it's a hunting scene. It's... Well, I don't know. It's, uh... Well, you ought to know, Jack. You're a master of ceremony. I know, but wait. Will you wait a minute? Listen, listen, wait. You've got to wait until Edmund Goulden gets here because he's going to direct it. And he... Oh, shh. Here he is. Hello. How do you do? Hello. How do you? Yes. We're all here, are we? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dean Arthur, Mary Bryan, Gary Cooper... And then me. Ray. And me, Oki. Yes. Okay. <laughs> When's Jimmy Hall and Dick Arlen? Well, uh, they're on location, but I think they'll be back any minute now. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do, Mr. Goulding? But now, it's a hunting scene, and the title of the song is The Strength of the Girl of Our Sailing, sailing, we tell the world we know that most any cop would fall for this job. It's a do-seen
Ah, ah. <laughs> Bancroft's the name, George Bancroft, not Bobby Jones. <laughs> possibly it wasn't necessary for me to tell you that. And possibly it's not necessary for me to tell you that I don't belong in a review. I know no parlor tricks. And I'm the one guy at a party that you can depend upon won't sing. <laughs> now, for example, last night I went to a party. Oh, there you are. Evening, Hello, George. Not at all. Delighted. Charming people, really. Miss Francis and Miss Keithley make a stunning picture together, don't they? My dear, what exquisite pearls. I'll introduce you in a moment. Please do. Oh, isn't that a picture of your late husband? Yes. This was Frederick's favorite photograph. I always keep it before me. I only met him once. What a man. Thank you. Ah, there you are. Oh, good evening, Mother. <laughs> I say, may I tell you a joke? Go right along with it. Uh, it's really a riddle. Good. <laughs> oh, I'll ask you, Mr. Bancroft. Splendid. There's nothing I like better than a good, clean riddle. <laughs> uh, I say, uh, rally around everybody, will you? I'm going to ask Mr. Bancroft a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me the difference between a post box and a goosey's egg? Difference between a post box? For posting letters. Oh. And a goose's egg? Yes, the immature offspring of a goose. <laughs> oh. oh, no, 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 no. You're laughing too soon. I beg your pardon. You give it up? With pleasure. He did that. Mr. Bancroft can't tell the difference between a post box and a goosey day. <laughs> and jolly well hate to give him a letter to post. <laughs> 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 oh, Mr. Bancroft. Yes? <laughs> I think you're simply marvelous. Why do they always make you play a bad man? Well, I don't know, my dear, unless it is that some of us are born to suffer. Oh. oh, George, I want you to meet my son, Billy. My dear Mr. Bancroft, you have always been my favorite actor. I think you are very good in your pictures, and I... And I... And my mother says, can I have your picture? Why, surely, my little man, I'll send you one. <laughs> Uh, quiet, everybody. Mr. Propagandas. Uh, uh, Mr. Ignacio uh, Propagandas. <laughs> Mr. Propaganda is going to sing for us. Do you like to hear something light or the opera? Yes. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about it, but my impulse was not to conduct myself as I did. And there's an idea. Now, if everybody there had followed their impulse, I imagine the party would have been somewhat different. <laughs> Hello, you. Uh, shut up. What for? <laughs> Sure, I'll try anything once. Did you ever see such a funny-looking crowd? Those drugstore beauties over there. Those are lovely pearls you have. What are they strung on? 
telephone wire? I'll introduce you to them if you don't watch out. Not while I'm conscious. Hey, ain't that the chap you married? That is right. I've been dying to burn this thing for a long time. How is the old clock? Still foreclosing mortgages? <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> he always was. It's a good thing you poisoned him. <laughs> ah, there you are, George. <laughs> oh, hey. hey, lay off. Say, hey, I want to ask you a riddle. No. no. Good. Now, can you tell me this? I'll get rid of me. Hey, Banco, come here. What do you want? You heard me, come here. Well, what do you want? I got something for you. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> 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 Joy. Come on, Bozo. <laughs> Who's dead? You're a bad girl. Huh? I don't think you're even tough. Oh, 